The pandemic has radically changed the world as we know it. And the actions we take today as we work to recover will define our generation. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. 2020 has been challenging on a lot of levels, as economic, environmental and societal frailties have been laid bare. But it's also proved that when we need to, we can act rapidly and restructure our lives. The recovery from the pandemic is an opportunity. We can see rays of hope in the form of a vaccine, but there is no vaccine for the planet. Nature needs a bailout. You don't want to go back to the status quo that you had before simply because it was the status quo that got us here. With everything falling apart, we can reshape the world in ways we couldn't before. Ways that better address so many of the challenges we face. And that's why so many are calling for a great reset. A great reset? That sounds more like buzzword bingo masking some nefarious plan for world domination. Hands up, this kind of slogan hasn't gone down well. But all we really want to say is that we all have an opportunity to build a better world. And it's not surprising that people who've been disenfranchised by a broken system and pushed even further by the pandemic will suspect global leaders of conspiracy. But the world's not that simple. Every one of us has differing priorities, values and ideas. That's part of why solutions are so hard to come by and why we all need to be involved in the decision making. Because whether it's politicians, CEOs, academics, activists or you, we're all about getting people together even those you may not like, to sit down at the table and develop solutions that work for all of us. But... There is enormous trust between the private sector and the public sector for this to actually work. That trust is hard to come by. It's time for people to work together, listen to each other and build this trust so we can move towards a better world. And we really need one. Because while the pandemic affects us all, it's clear it affects some more than others. The first people who are hit are the people at the front, those who are vulnerable. It is those on the front line who take it first, and that is simply unacceptable. See, at the start of 2020, 1% of the world's population owned 44% of the wealth. And since the start of the pandemic, billionaires have increased theirs by more than 25%, whilst 150 million people fell back into extreme poverty. And with climate change set to dwarf the damage caused by the pandemic, the message from 2020 should be abundantly clear. Capitalism, as we know it, is dead. This obsession that we have had with maximizing profits for shareholders alone has led to incredible inequality and a planetary emergency. But no one can do this alone, and top-down approaches won't get us anywhere because everything we've learned in our work has shown us that diverse voices lead to better results. And it's for these reasons that the forum talks about something called stakeholder capitalism, which would shift businesses away from just profit. Because if we want to change where the focus of our recovery will go, then we need a new dashboard for the new economy. And that needs to encompass people, planet, prosperity and institutions. Giving people a real stake in the economy and putting well-being before growth and that's all about getting the right people in the right place at the right time. We must rebuild our relationship with nature for the survival of the peoples and our planet. We have a window of time which is closing and we need everybody who cares to get together and find solutions now. It's the people who have great ideas and who share them with others. They're the ones who are shaping the future. So if you want to be a part of the change, then tune in, turn on and get involved. Follow the Davos Agenda, right here, online, on YouTube. <laughs>